Hello, welcome to this Q&A session of the Interfaith Film and Music Festival. My name is Surima Prebeyer and I am a filmmaker, photographer and writer. And I am collaborating with the film festival as a judge and also as a Q&A session moderator. Today, we're going to be talking about the kingdom that we just watched. And we have the luck of having James Meyer and Sarah Meyer, the director and writer, and then the producer of this film. Hello, Sarah and James, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you. It's an honor for us and we're really grateful that you took some time to share your thoughts and your journey with our audience and with us. Absolutely. Uh, doing a film is a very long, beautiful and sometimes overwhelming uh, journey, but it all starts with an idea with the motivation. So I would like to hear yours to when you come up with uh, the kingdom. Sure. Well, we like to make uplifting films. Um, we wanna make stories that can uh, be positive and, and hopefully help people to lift their eyes to something higher. And so we wanted to make a story that was positive about uh, forgiveness. Uh, we had just finished making a film in Central Asia and we wanted to produce something similar in Europe. So uh, we have friends in multiple countries here in Europe. We live in Germany. And so we asked several of our friends because we knew that we couldn't make a story alone by ourselves. So we said, we need partners, somebody, you know, a place that we can produce a film. And so we just asked some friends, do they have thoughts about uh, making a story that would be positive. And some friends in Kosovo responded that they knew an actor and the actor actually had an idea for the story. His name was Artan and he became the older brother in our story. And so he had an idea to um, make a story based on the prodigal son from the Bible. And so we thought, well, that's really, really interesting. And that gave us a framework to start because it's a positive story. So we flew to Pristina to meet Artan and we, spent several days with him um, asking him questions and and that became that became the the foundation for where we started I think it's very positive that you decided to do like a constructive story it's, it's something that we definitely be uh, these days I want to add a note we have La Sonia Thompson um, the producer of the festival uh, in silence with us doing all the behind the scenes work and I want to uh, mentioned that she's she's here and like uh, you know thanks her for her support mm -hmm. going back to the film um and this question goes especially for sada mm -hmm. uh feature film is a big milestone in the career of a director and a producer but it brings a lot of responsibilities and challenges and one of them is funding and that my make a film gray or delay its production for a long time. So I want to hear a little bit about the funding process of the kingdom. Yeah, it was um, honestly quite miraculous <laughs> the way things turned out. Um, we personally really believed in this story and particularly because Kosovo has been through, I don't know if you know the viewers will remember, but there was a terrible war that went on and just the concept of forgiveness and reconciliation was something that we realized would be a very powerful story to tell. So we personally invested in the movie ourselves and had family and friends who also really believed in it and wanted to get behind it. But the most amazing thing was when we went to Kosovo and we were there like three different times and we would meet people and tell the story um about it and when they heard about the father and the two sons and how the sons were acting and how the father was so forgiving and all of that they said wow this is a story that needs to be told and so they got behind it and um even the actors themselves um would say like hey you know let me show you i've got a great idea for like the family house like that cool round house in the movie um, it was actually one of the actor's neighbors who owns that house. And he'd been asked by like um, music video people, very famous singer, different people who wanted to film commercials there or whatever. And he kept saying, no, 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 you can't film in my house. But when his neighbor, our actor asked, 
he said, well, you can't say no to a neighbor because you have to keep living beside him. So he said, you can film in my house. So like just, he enabled us. We didn't pay for it, but a lot of the locations we got for free. And um, we received a lot of favors, yeah. which was uh, an amazing gift. In one case for the hotel, we actually bartered some drone photography and some, um, and some photography for in exchange for filming at the hotel. So there is that thing of potentially using bartering to do it. Um, but also I think just people were so excited about this story. They just wanted to be helpful. The people in Kosovo are amazing. And um, so that, I mean, our budget was amazingly low for the movie that, you know, we filmed seven weeks, three countries, 22 actors and had an amazingly low budget. And so a lot of that was due to that. Um, so I would say, you know, Jim's father says, you never know unless you ask. So I would say be bold to step out, share your story. And if it captures people's hearts, they will get behind it. I mean, I can share just a little story. We met um, the owner of a hotel, one of the largest hotels in Pristina, Kosovo. And we got to have coffee with him and um, we wanted to film in his hotel. We wanted his, a room for two days in his hotel to film. And so we started telling him just the basic story. And the more we started telling him the story, he starts tearing up and, and he, uh, uh, tears come up in his eyes. And he said, you're describing my sons. He said, you can film in my hotel for free as much as you want. This story needs to be told in Kosovo. They need to hear this story. So it was just a gift that we were able to, to um, be able to do so much and mm -hmm. have so much favor. It was wonderful. It's very good that you highlight uh, other ways of engaging or uh, finding uh, locations, contributors, uh, money, ways of doing your film that are non-traditional or not the ones that you learn in film school or you hear more often. And that will open the minds of hopefully some of the young filmmakers or maybe the more experienced ones that are trying to push their film forward and like they know that through this type of engagement they, they can actually get a lot of support. That's, that's a beautiful story. I'm very glad you came across good people. And we'll bring along another question that I have for you and is precisely Kosovo. It's unfortunately a country that whose portray in the media hasn't been the best. And I believe to be a country with a lot to offer. And you just described the amazing uh, quality, human quality of the people in Kosovo. Do you believe the kingdom to have helped to, to, to spread a different uh, image of Kosovo? Oh, I hope so. Everybody that we met, all the Albanian Kosovars that we met, they were warm, friendly people good people um, went out of their way to, to be kind and allow us privileges to be able to film. Um, Even like their national pride, it was so great because at the closing, one of the closing scenes where the sun comes home and they celebrate with the dancers and the musicians and the costumes that they're wearing, um, you know, it, they're like, let's, can we get this dance troupe and this musicians, you know, we know these people and they're amazing. And so we weren't planning on doing that, but we put it in. And I mean, they were even dancing on this carpet that was over a hundred years old, a very traditional carpet. And in that area, as Jim mentioned, um, there is a lot of wine production. And so by showing the wine festival and the stomping the grapes and everything, you know, you tend to think of those things as more Western Europe, but it, it shows a lot of the variety um, and the culture that is there. So I think people were really pleased with that. I mean, we mentioned earlier, there had been a very bloody war for a couple of years in Kosovo. And so the, the desire to create a story about reconciliation was very strong in me that I wanted to make a story that would help them to see neighbors and family members as somebody that, um, that is worth forgiving and going the extra mile for. And so um, I think the story has resonated very well there in, in sharing to the people in Kosovo. And I hope that it's, you know, now that it's getting into film festivals, my hope is that 
uh, Albanians would and Kosovars would um, have a positive identity. Hopefully. Hopefully. I was very young when the war started, but I still like I was like seven, five years old, but I still have the memories of what it was. And there are many filmmakers that portray it, but in a more negative way, let's say it sometimes to bring light to what they went through, but it also sort of developed um, a, a very particular um, image of Kosovo. You also mentioned that uh, actors were a paramount uh, workforce in your film. They, they brought ideas, they brought contributors, and they ultimately, I guess, uh, made those characters more three-dimensional, more interesting. Absolutely. I'd like to hear, especially from James, um, first of all, how much do the actors contributed to make those characters interesting? But also I would like to hear a little bit about your directing actors techniques and uh, if you address any specific way when you are um, with them uh, behind cameras. Um, I can talk about that first, just giving direction to the actors. The thing that seemed to be the most helpful was to explain the logic of the scene. And most of the, um, the actors that we worked with had been theater actors. So they had some good theater experience. Some of them had been television actors, but they were able to actually understand the logic and translate it very well. So we, we had the privilege of working with some good actors. Um, some of the actors really embodied the characters like Shpatem, the guy who was the, the slippery artist. Uh, he, he really was spontaneous and he took on that character and uh, he made it more three-dimensional, like you say. And, uh, and same with Labanot, the, the Fatmir character, the, the main character. Um, he was a, a brilliant actor and uh, he had a beautiful range and it was very easy to give him control. I could, I could say, um, can we do a little bit less? And he would do just a little bit less. So, so they were very responsive actors. And actually like for Labanot, the younger son, he lost his father in the war and it was a very painful thing for him. So when we needed him to cry at the end, I mean, that, those were real tears, you know, he, it wasn't, there weren't like eye drops or anything. And he just went off and we just had him think of something really sad. And we didn't know what he was going to be thinking about, but he was thinking about his father. And when he came out, we ran camera and I mean, it was just, those tears were there. And so helping them think about different things that will bring out the emotion was also mm -hmm. a good technique, I think. Yeah. I would say too, I'll just sneak in here at the producer side of this, um, that one thing that we did that really helped, and I guess it depends on how professional your actors are, but if the actors are extremely professional, you probably wanna start with your most difficult, most emotive scenes first, cause they kind of like to get them out of the way. Um, but if you are, and, and then if you, as you run out of time, which you tend to do towards the end of producing, the uh, filming that if you have the little bits of pieces, you know, that no dialogue or whatever, you can kind of tuck them in different places on different days. But in a lot of the films we've done in the past, actually we've done a lot of films with not professional actors. And even these guys who were professionals, but still just needed to warm up to everything. And we tend to have crews that come from all over the place, you know, a different lighting guy, sound guy, whatever some guy from one city, some guy from somewhere else. So what we do is we will um, basically pile together the scenes um, with you know, certain characters that don't have any dialogue at all. And we film those first because it warms up everybody. It gets the pr production crew ready. It gets the actors ready, but they don't have to even open their mouths. You know, It's simple, it's a simple yeah. start. And then we, and then after that, we do the scenes that have just maybe one or two lines of dialogue and get, get going with that. And then the lines with a lot more dialogue, um, the scenes that have a lot more lines in them. And then finally we hold out and do the most emotive scenes last. Um, and that really worked for the, the younger son, the Labanot, the prodigal son guy, because by the end of the month, we could see him develop like crazy. So 
I just think that's a technique that's really helpful um, to not expect right out of the, you know, right out of the, you know, where you're starting that they're going to be able to just emote immediately. Great. Those, those are great. Uh, um, that's, that's great advice. And also it's sort of simple. It's, it's like a production strategy that you can work around of, um, depending on the experience of your actors can be very helpful for both production and also um, the actors and actresses, of course. Um, so we're, we're getting towards the end of our Q&A session. We wanted to do something short to get to know more about you, but also keep the audience uh, engaged since they just watched the film. And uh, the film, sorry. And these two last questions um, I put in because I intend to bring you both as people to the spotlight. You are not only partners uh, in filmmaking, but also partners in life. And that's beautiful but it's, it must be also very uh, challenging. So I would like to hear a little bit more, how do you manage that relationship? And lastly, um, as you have so much experience, not only in filmmaking, but also in advertising, you've lived all around the, the world. You're now in Germany, but you live in the United States. So you, are, you have a long story in this media, and I believe uh, young filmmakers do uh, benefit a lot from your advices. So I would like to hear a little bit about that as well. Well, first I'd say um, being married has been tremendous in the fact that you're working with somebody that you can rely on. And if you're invested in the story and in the project fully, they will be too. And uh, so you can give somebody else a responsibility, but they may not feel like, you know, if it doesn't get done tonight, oh, well, I'll just take it tomorrow. But if you give it to your spouse, it's like, well, it's got to be done before tomorrow, so they'll do what it takes. Um, so that would say it's been a real blessing. It can have its challenges because um, if you disagree and then you have to go home at night after your job is done, you go home to the same people. <laughs> so um, that's where a challenges could be, but uh, it's, been, it's been great. We've been able to do a lot together, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so too. And um, yeah, it, it you really do get a lot done. We tend to both be very hard workers. And so, like he said, you know, we're, when, when everyone else is done for the day, we are, we are the, you know, last ones in bed and the first ones up and just making sure that because we're so invested in it, we want to make sure everything's done and taken care of and ready to go. So as far as um, advice, I would say, you know, be willing to work really hard. It's going to take a lot of hard work and believing in yourself Mm -hmm. and being confident in the story you want to tell because other people um, will catch on to that and get excited with you um, to be a part of it, to want to help you and, and all of that. But I would also say, you know, start every day fresh. You could have, I mean, one, one time, you know, we filmed and it was like the worst day ever, but the next day was like the best day ever. So to not just assume that, oh my gosh, this is falling and it's gonna, you know, because you just have to start out and have confidence. And the other thing is, you know, there can be conflict on the set, but we actually learned from one guy when we were filming in Central Asia one time, you know, we had butted heads a bit on the set. He was the assistant director and I was producing and, and I said, you know, afterwards, hey, I'm sorry, you know, as we were walking out, um, you know, sorry for the, you know, tension or whatever. And he's like, oh, it's no problem. He said, I just, that's on set and we have our things there. And when we walk off the set, it's every, it's a clean slate, you know? And so being able to just say, okay, we, we had that tense time because we were having to work with stuff and whatever, but relationally and offset, like just, we let it go. And I thought that's so wise, you know? And as far as advice, I would just say, um, if you believe in yourself, you know, that's the, nobody else will. So you have to believe in yourself. Um, be as prepared as you can be. And if you are passionate about what you're doing, other people will catch the vision and get passionate with you. If you, if you struggle and have doubts, um, that's, that is just going to translate to other people. And pretty soon, if you're doubting your story, they may start doubting and, and, so you never get traction. But if you if you believe in what you're doing, go above and beyond for yourself yeah. because 
that's where it's going to start. Well, James and Sarah, thank you very much for sharing your film, first of all, and now your story. You seem to be very synchronized as, as uh, co-workers, but also as a partner. It's, it's a beautiful, you're a beautiful couple and you have so much to offer. We are very fortunate to having had you today here. Thank um, you. It's a privilege. Um, we're getting to the end of this Q&A session. Before we go, I'm gonna, I want to um, uh, thank the audience for being with us today and encourage them to keep in tune with our festival. And uh, if you couldn't uh, watch the film, I encourage you to look for it because it's worth every minute of, um, of, of it to watch it. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you. Serena. See you. Bye-bye.